last, third and last technical session that we have today is cooperation with foreign defense companies. This session is being chaired by Vice Admiral A.K. Chawla, Chief of Personnel, Indian Navy. An alumnus of the National Defense Academy, Vice Admiral Anil Kumar Chawla was commissioned in the Indian Navy in January 1982. A navigation and direction specialist, Vice Admiral Chawla commanded Coast Guard ship CO-1, the Vinash, a missile boat, the missile corvette Cora, Stealth Frigate Tabar, and aircraft carrier Virat. Those who will be speaking are Mr. Ashish Saraf, Vice President, Industry Development, Strategic Partnerships and Offsets, Airbus Group. Stefan Levine, Vice President, Sales and Marketing, India, Thales. Alistair Castle, Country Director, India, BAE Systems. And Mr. Apparao Mallavarapu, the Chairman and Ma Managing Director of Centum Electronics. I hand over the uh, session to you, Vice Admiral Chawla. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nitin Gokhale, Air Marshal Bhosle, Offsetting Sisk. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm indeed very honored to be here this uh, evening on this very interesting seminar that has been organized by Bharat Chak. And uh, the next session has, has just been announced is on the cooperation with foreign defense companies. Uh, I'm sure the assembled DAs will find this uh, more interesting. We are all aware that no country can be really totally self-reliant. Uh, on uh, defense technology or rather on any technology in today's date. Uh, what we really aim for as, as far as uh, the Navy is concerned, we have coined the term optimum self-reliance because 100% uh, self-reliance is not possible. Uh, it's not cost effective either. Uh, consequently, in uh, several sectors, uh, as far as India is concerned, uh, uh, as all of you are aware, particularly in the aviation sector, in the submarine sector, and certain other sensitive sectors, there is a requirement for uh, India to collaborate with foreign OEMs and foreign governments uh, for the Make in India endeavor to be successful in these high-tech areas. Uh, in the past, this is nothing new. Uh, it has been going on in the past. In the past, we used to do it through license production. Uh, license production was not the best method of doing something because once you produce an item under license, you could never really make the next version of that and it, it was a de novo process all over again if you wanted to make the next version of the equipment. And consequently, we graduated to the buy and make program under which uh, we would buy certain component from the foreign OEM and then we would use the advantages of lower cost of production in India, principally the uh, high tech, uh, uh, the uh, highly skilled individuals that we have in India to make the same item in India at, at a cheaper uh, rate and then uh, produce it subsequently and in some cases there were even a few isolated cases where we exported in conjunction with the foreign OEM. Uh, this has uh, advanced further as you are aware uh, from the 49 percent automatic uh, FDI in a company that can make defense items in India. It has been opened up to 100 percent on a case to case basis uh, particularly where the uh, government of India feels that the technology is uh, cutting edge and high tech. Uh, and this is available, this route is available for 100% FDI. So um, this session is about uh, cooperation. Um, for BA Systems, uh, international cooperation is vital uh, for our business, not just in India, but actually globally. I think it's uh, important to remember uh, the tensions that a government has to balance in meeting this objective. The need for defense capability for the specific armed force requirements, the desire to build and sustain an indigenous defense capability, and finally, the need to show value for money to the nation. So for BA Systems in India, an improved DPP framework, better FDI conditions, and consideration to widening the offset parameters coupled with the Make in India policy make India for us a country where we think the vision is achievable. Now for BA Systems, our cooperation here has actually been for almost 70 years. The de Havilland Tiger Moth, Jaguars, Sea Harriers and Hawk have all built capacity into the industrial landscape of India. Our more recent collaboration with HAL which was mentioned in the last session, is one that I would like to highlight. 
Now this commenced 12 years ago and it's just resulted in um, a significant milestone as HAL have produced their 100th aircraft Hawk trainer built in India for India. The next phase for BA Systems in India will involve the Make in India M777 and one which we will also hope to grow here in India. This venture is going to be through a commercial partnership. Well, we estimate as a company that we've generated something like 12 billion pounds of economic benefit to around 30 countries worldwide through offset programs. India has now a very solid backdrop of strong GDP growth, positive reforms, and a desire to seek partnerships. So there has never really been a better time to make in India. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bharat Shakti, for organizing the, uh, the event. And uh, thank you for inviting uh, Airbus to share our perspectives. Um, in the next few minutes, what I'll do is I'll lay out what Airbus has done to position India um, as a, a key and a critical player in the export market, uh, especially for aerospace and defense industries. Um, and then I'll um, possibly make two or three points that will probably further propel the, uh, the you know, this notion or, or this positioning and, and strengthen it further. So in Airbus, uh, we have a system that actually ranks uh, countries in uh, a matrix, uh, the x-axis being uh, cost competitiveness, skills, uh, quality of delivery, export preparedness, and so forth. And on the y-axis, we have uh, market access. And, and it's, it's a quadrant. And, uh, yeah, you know, while most of the countries kind of, you know, go into the, me the middle, you know, there are very, very few countries that pair in the top right-hand corner of this quadrant. And uh, happy to say that India is one of them. So as an example, every other Airbus A320 that gets delivered out of Airbus, and, and believe me, there are hundreds of them that get delivered in a matter of one year, approximately over 500 of them. Every other A320 has a door that's made in India, has a flap track beam, which is a safety critical component that's made in India. And not only that, we also make the safety evacuation slide, uh, which is, you know, you might have seen on some air accidents, you're actually passengers sliding down the evacuation slide, are made in India, uh, you know, especially for our Super Jumbo A380 program. Uh, so these are the kind of capabilities that we have been able to not only develop, but leverage from the country over the decade. And we are committed to expanding it, growing them and, and making more and more export out of India. Now on the military side, our plans, uh, you know, are uh, as, as we have uh, mentioned previously in, in many forums as well, is to actually make India a destination for manufacture of the Panther helicopters that we have been offering for the Navy's Naval Utility Helicopter Program. That's in collaboration with the Mahindras. What that will do is not only establish India as the center of competence for manufacturing the Panthers locally and serving to the to the forces mainly the navy but also it will be a destination of choice for us to export and serve the global market out of india and once we do that it will also be a, a center for design and configuration management for the design evolutions of the product that will actually be done uh, from locally and will uh, serve for the global export mar markets on the fixed wing side we offer the C-295 military cargo lift uh, aircraft to be made in collaboration with the Tatas. And again, we are looking for India to be made as a destination of choice uh, for looking at, uh, we are assessing the, serving the global market of, from India uh, for this military cargo uh, aircraft as well. In terms of acceleration, uh, it probably will be a great step forward and a help um, from the uh, government itself if uh, there is adherence to uh, the mandatory procurement timelines as mentioned in the DPP that will put a gigantic step forward in terms of uh, enabling us to offer these programs.
That's all I have. Thank you so much. I'm going to introduce to you the Thales company. Um, quite honored to be part of this audience. And so I hope I will not be too long before, before the end of this session. So just uh, a couple of words about the Thales Corporation. We are, uh, of course, a global corporation. Uh, we are uh, currently a group of 65,000 people, roughly, most of them being engineers. And so we have, as you may imagine, a lot of activities in the R&D domain. We are principal operating on the defense area but we are also serving other markets like the security market like the avionics market and like the transportation market talking about India and talking about cooperation because that's the topic today well uh, cooperation for us started more than 60 years ago uh, actually it started in 1953 and today we are uh, present in India very significantly. India is uh, approximately contributing to our turnover up to 300 million euros per year. And we claim that uh, we are a trusted partner for all the three services of the armed forces, of course. Uh, just to, to mention a couple of examples of our reference regarding the Air Force first, uh, we are the major partner for the upgrade of the Mirage 2000, for example, but we are also one of the main providers of the radar system, like the LLTR program. Um, and so we are on board of uh, many aircraft with our avionics suits, uh, IFF, and many other stuff that I would mention. For the Navy, uh, if I may mention, we are uh, on board of ships for uh, electronic warfare equipment. Uh, air, um, as well as sonar for, uh, for surveillance, which is uh, one of our major assets in Thales. We claim to be one of the first provider of this type of equipment in the world. And to mention the Army, uh, we are providing uh, thermal imagers and uh, air defense radar like the Flycatcher Mark I, for example. And now looking at the future and looking again at cooperation, so uh, I want to tell you that Thales has really made India at the heart of our development strategy. Uh, we want to uh, use the uh, India engineering capability. Of course, we talk about the competitiveness of India, but we may talk as well of the good education of the people that you will find in India, of the innovation that is uh, almost everywhere in India, and that's really what we want to leverage in our strategy, and we have made it strong to develop our sourcing from India and our uh, development from India. So our goal is not only to source from India, but is really to make some product in India, to invent some product in India. And the goal of that is not only to sell it to the India Mars forces, but the objective of that is to serve the global market from India. So in, it's not only make in India to serve the Indian market, but it's make in India and it's make from India for the rest of the world. So of course we have some expectation on the Indian market for this Faro's product, but we have huge expectation on the global market. So this is a nice story that we want to repeat for other segments in our strategy. And definitely we are looking for the evolution in the regulatory environment and we are looking very positively at the Make in India initiative, very positively at the new DPP uh, int introductions of facilities uh, because we really want to develop our uh, product portfolio in India and not only, not only for India but for the rest of the world. Thank you, sir. Vice Admiral uh, Chavla, ladies and gentlemen, um, very good afternoon. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here this evening. Um, the session is about the cooperation with the foreign defense companies, but the reality is we are a 100% Indian company. Um, so I think 90% of our business is outside of India, and we work with companies like Thales and like Airbus, and so that's probably why they slotted me into this. So I'll tell you who we are and what we do and how cooperating with uh, companies like Thales or Airbus or Safran has actually helped us grow. Essentially, we, we do business in four different uh, categories. One is uh, design and services. Uh, we actually design, uh, we have a design services business. Uh, we also do strategic electronic products, which is we actually design the product and uh, manufacture it. We also do services, which is really uh, very good for offset. Um, most of our electronic manufacturing services business is offset. And then we also make an electronic component uh, called frequency control product, which finds use, of course, in telecom, but also in uh, defense and space. Um, in terms of uh, what we do, we do the complete uh, product realization, which is right from concept design uh, to manufacturing to even uh, life cycle support. 
Um, we, of course, do just the design services, which is the first uh, one, two, three uh, boxes. And then, of course, if it's built to print, we do the remaining. And, of course, in terms of product realization, we do the whole thing. Uh, in terms of global uh, footprint, uh, we have design and engineering, uh, both uh, yeah, well in India and in uh, France, in Canada and in the U.S. So very quickly, um, in terms of a summary, we, are, we have a global presence and internationally experienced leadership team uh, dedicated to high levels of customer satisfaction. Uh, we have a highly experienced team uh, with over 20 years of international experience in designing high reliability, high technology products. Of course, uh, we are a world-class manufacturing facility, otherwise we wouldn't be able to export, um, qualified to the highest standards in aerospace and defense. Um, and uh, customer industry and government recognitions uh, for innovation, process, cost, uh, quality. We have enough and more uh, awards that we get. Uh, so that's a very quick uh, uh, snapshot of what we do as a company. And uh, just in tune with the session now, uh, I think, like we said, uh, this is cooperation with uh, big uh, multinational companies. And then uh, I must say, we have been pretty uh, big beneficiaries of this kind of cooperation. Thank you very much. Just a brief introduction to Dr. Satish Reddy. Uh, Dr. Satish Reddy is a distinguished scientist in DRDO, and he has taken over as the scientific advisor to the Raksha Mantri. Uh, he is an eminent missile scientist, and he has made pioneering contributions to navigation and avionics technologies, uh, particularly at the research center in Marath, where he spent a long time. So I'm sure what he has to say will be of great interest to all of us. Uh, over to you, Mr. Satish. The last about uh, probably 20, 25 years uh, in India, the three major players in the defense industry are defense technologies, the academic institutes, then the defense R&D organization, and the industry, DPSUs and the private sector. Uh, with a concentrated effort and synergy have built in or uh, developed many technologies. Today, uh, India has in uh, defense area many technologies what have been developed indigenously here and then industry is able to produce them, uh, many of them. Uh, Whether well, it is right from component level to system levels and building facilities and uh, connected technologies as a system of systems also. Some of the advanced countries, if uh, they show interest in some of the <coughs> advanced areas, we are ready to cooperate and work as a giant development in some of those uh, uh, futuristic areas, uh, which we can work together with uh, R&D institutes or academic institutes of various countries in some of the identified uh, futuristic areas, whether it's materials or uh, engines or propulsion related things or high temperature, high strength uh, materials or the sensors like atomic interferometric or things like that or HRGs or hyperspectral, multispectral areas. These are some of the areas where we can uh, work together in the advanced nations who are uh, ready to work together for the futuristic technologies development. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity given. To